Welcome to the Mammoth Site. The animals whose bones are preserved here lived about 140,000 years ago during the last ice age in a time known as the Pleistocene. However, the forces that would seal their fate were set in motion millions of years earlier. The story starts about 320 million years ago with the deposition of the Pahasapa limestone, a sedimentary rock formed in a shallow sea. Above that, a layer of red shale, known as the Spearfish Formation, was deposited. Ongoing accumulation of sedimentary rocks occurred through the Mesozoic era, including the deposition of darker shales and mudstones associated with shallow seas of the late Cretaceous period. About 65 million years ago, a dramatic event known as the Laramide eruption took place that would forever alter these rock layers. Tectonic plates that made up the surface of the Earth near what was then the western coast of the North American continent collided violently over millions of years. This collision caused the horizontal rock layers to buckle upward, forming the Rocky Mountains and the Black Hills of South Dakota. As the rock layers of the Black Hills bowed upward, weathering and erosion slowly stripped them away. The ancient granite core of the Black Hills was exposed, surrounded by rings of younger rocks. The ring made up of the Spearfish Formation is known as the Red Race Track and can be seen around hot springs today. The geological process that started the uplift of the Rocky Mountains millions of years ago continued into the Pleistocene, fracturing the shale and limestone layers beneath the Black Hills. Over time, underground water dissolved portions of the limestone, forming cavities and caverns in the southern hills near what one day would be hot springs. Around 140,000 years ago, the weight of rock above eventually caused the cave to collapse, creating a steep-sided geological feature called a sinkhole. Subsurface water flowing under and through the cave was rerouted after the collapse and came up into the sinkhole, partially filling it and creating a pond. The sides of the sinkhole were covered by shale, which is very slippery when wet. A trap was set. The water in the sinkhole was warm, so grass and other forage grew around the edge of the pond year-round. Young male mammoths seeking an easy lunch and an attractive bathing pool entered the sinkhole and couldn't climb back out. Scientists believe the mammoths and other animals were actively being trapped here over many millennia, creating a rich deposit of fossils Layer after layer of sediment and bones were deposited, while minerals dissolved from the limestone began to cement it all together inside the sinkhole. Eventually, the sinkhole was completely filled in, providing a unique environment for preservation. The fossils remained undisturbed. During the time since the sinkhole filled, water slowly washed away the softer spearfish shale and soils from around the filled pond, leaving a hill instead of a sinkhole. Evidence from the mammoth site shows that many of the animals that lived here during the Ice Age still inhabit the Black Hills today. Rabbits, ground squirrels, prairie dogs, gophers, deer mouse, bushy-tailed wood rats, voles, wolves, coyote, mink, and pronghorn. Others that lived here, such as short-faced bears, sharp ox, llamas, and Colombian and woolly mammoths are now extinct. The Columbian mammoth and woolly mammoth represent the largest species discovered at the mammoth site, with the Columbian mammoth being the more common of the two species. Both Columbian and woolly mammoths share an ancestor with today's elephants. As populations of mammoths made the three million year migration from Africa into Europe, Asia, and North America, they gradually changed becoming the iconic Ice Age animals whose fossils can be seen here today. They eventually became extinct thousands of years after this sinkhole was formed, 
though the reason why is still hotly debated. In 1974, a contractor named Phil Anderson purchased the surrounding land with plans to create a housing development. The hill was considered an eyesore and was slated to be torn down. When bones, teeth, and tusks were uncovered by a bulldozer, Mr. Anderson immediately recognized their importance and stopped construction. He contacted Dr. Larry Agenbrot at Chapman State College, who began scientific investigations. Dr. Agenbrot, seeing the unique potential of this mammoth deposit, recommended the site be preserved in place. Phil Anderson then sold the land at cost to the newly formed nonprofit, the mammoth site of Hot Springs, SD Inc. The mammoth site is a working paleontological site and the task of excavating, discovering, and preserving this wealth of Ice Age information continues today. As an institute excavation, digging is undertaken with great care. Tools such as trowels, dental picks, and paintbrushes are favored in order to avoid damage to bones. Many specimens are left exposed in the ground in order to allow visitors and scientists to see exactly where the bones have been uncovered. All specimens of the mammoth site are documented using state-of-the-art mapping techniques. This data is used for both managing the collection of fossils and analyzing the spatial relationship of the specimens at the site. The mammoth bones that you will see are only one aspect of this 140,000-year-old story. The very sediments our diggers excavate provide a rich source of information. This comes in the form of the smaller bones of rodents, rabbits, fish, and amphibians, as well as the shells of snails, clams, insects, and crustaceans. These fossils are best recovered through screen washing, a process where sediments from the site are passed through smaller and smaller sieves with water. This process gently separates the smaller rocks and fossils from the sinkhole sediments. With a trained eye and a reasonable amount of time, mammoth site scientists, interns, and volunteers are able to collect, record, and analyze these very important microfossils, which provide valuable information about past environmental conditions. The bones of the mammoth site are very fragile. They are not petrified or turned to stone like dinosaur bones. Mammoth site bones have had the original organic molecules leached out by soaking in the warm water and thus are very dry. All of the bones you will see in the sinkhole have been treated with preservatives to prevent them from damage and deterioration. We sometimes remove fossils for scientific study or for preservation concerns. When this is done, a plaster field jacket is put around the bone for protection much in the same way a plaster cast is used to protect a broken arm bone. Once a bone is removed, it takes a short journey downstairs to the laboratory. Here, the bones are gently cleaned, repaired, and treated with preservatives. Most of the work is done by hand. Hard sediment crust is removed from the bone using air tools that slowly chip away sediment like miniature jackhammers. After a bone has been completely prepared, it is moved to our bone storage vault, where they can be studied by paleontologists from the mammoth site and other institutions and universities. All mammoth site specimens are stored here on site, but our molding and casting department does make replicas of our bones that we send to scientists and educators all over the world. Due to the quantity, diversity, and quality of the fossils preserved here, the Mammoth Site is without equal in North America. The Mammoth Site is one of the very few displays of fossil mammoths in North America, where their remains have been left in place, and it is clearly the largest. Containing remains of more than 60 mammoths, the site is a treasure chest for all who come from around the world to participate in research and learning. For those of you who would like to learn more about our work here, the Mammoth Site offers a wide variety of educational programs, including our Mammoth Site Excavation and Preservation Program. Ask any employee for more specific information. And now, we invite you to experience, firsthand, the vestiges of the past.
point.